Hello and welcome to the research rundown. My name is Courtney Pinkard and I am the reference coordinator at the Alabama Department of Archives and History. We are so glad you're here with us today because October is Archives Month and we're kicking it off by spotlighting some great local archives that may very well be right in your own backyard. Uh, but before I introduce our guests, I have a couple of housekeeping announcements I'd like to make. Um, first, if you have any questions for our speakers today, you can drop those in the comments and we will do our best to answer the questions. Um, also, second, uh, this is a recording and um, so it's not going to be live, but you can always find our recordings at the Alabama Department of Archives and History's official YouTube channel if you'd like to, uh, to share with friends and family or to rewatch older research rundowns. We have all of those collected into a single playlist, very convenient, on the ADAH YouTube channel. So you can check it out there. And we also have a very full slate of um, great programs this month for Archives Month. And I had to print them all out so I could keep up with them all. I didn't want to miss anything. Um, of course, you know, we've got the research rundown now and then tomorrow, um, October 5th, we have History Now, conversations on the past and present, and they're going to be discussing redistricting redistricting in Alabama after the 2020 census. Attorneys and former legislators will explore the history of redistricting and provide insight into the process, public involvement, and the stakes of this important work. Then Sunday, October 10th is Electronic Records Day, um, and we're going to be using the hashtag ERX e Day on social media. We're going to join other state archives to raise awareness of the special challenges associated with preserving electronic records. On Wednesday, October 13th, we will have Alabama Women's History Series, Women in the Progressive Era. Dr. Sheena Harris and Dr. Marty Olive will discuss the lives and accomplishments of two early 20th century Alabama women, Margaret Murray Washington and Alma Rittenberry. Uh, also on Wednesday, October 13th, that is hashtag Ask an Archivist Day on Twitter. Our ADAH archivist will respond to questions tweeted with the hashtag Ask an Archivist. On Monday, October 18th, we have Untangling the Web, Finding Your Alabama Ancestors in Cyberspace. This is going to be a free genealogy webinar on the wide variety of online resources available for family history research. Pre-registration is required and we have had to limit it to 100 participants and you will be able to register for that on our website. Uh, Thursday, October 21st, we are going to have uh, from Marion to Montgomery, the early years of Alabama State University presented by Joseph Caver. That's our monthly food for thought program. And last but not least, on Thursday, October 28th, we will have a virtual tour of our EBSCO research room. And all of these um, events are virtual, so you can access them wherever you are on any device that has access to the internet, uh, phone, tablet, computer, you name it. Um, so you should be able to participate in those throughout the month. And we're very excited to offer some wonderful programs in honor of Archives Month. So getting back to the task at hand, I am very pleased to introduce representatives from the Baldwin County Department of Archives and History and the Limestone County Archives. Down on the beautiful uh, Gulf Coast in Baldwin County, we have Felicia Anderson, Selena Garza, and Robert Brown joining us. And then way up in the certainly no less beautiful Appalachian foothills of Limestone County, we have Miss Rebecca Davis. And so I'm going to turn it over to Felicia and her team first, and then we will hear from Rebecca. Take it away, guys. Hi, guys. Thank you, Courtney. As Courtney mentioned, my name is Felicia Anderson, and I am the director of Baldwin County Department of Archives and History. I have here with me today my staff, Selena Garza and Robert Brown. They are both archive specialists with us. My role is administrative hands-on work, research communications with media public affairs, building public relationships and partnerships and much more. But we're gonna to talk to you today about how to start your research at the Baldwin County Department of Archives and History. But before we do that, and I turn you, turn you over to Selena and Robert, I feel it's appropriate to tell you a little bit about our facility, just in case you haven't had the opportunity to visit us. 
Our facility started out as one man's dream, a former county attorney, uh, Talbot Brantley. He decided that all of Baldwin County's records should be under one roof to increase efficiency and availability to the public. In the late 1990s, his dream became a reality An Alabama legislation enacted Baldwin County legislature and established the Baldwin County Department of Archives and History as a department under the Baldwin County Commission. We hold records for Baldwin County courts and mostly Baldwin County departments. In our facility, we have about 1,800 photos, 42 to 43 objects. We are a small facility, but we have a lot of records. We have 600 books, 3,089 record series titles. Our records date back from 1732 to current. So you can begin your, your research here at the Baldwin County Archives facility. We have many documents in the back that will assist you in that task. And at this time, I'm gonna allow Selena and Robert to tell you more about that. All right, my name is Selena. Um, so I'm gonna talk about, to start off, if you wanna do research at Baldwin County, um, you could, and let me pull up our PowerPoint real quick, sorry. All right. Can you guys see that? And as Selena's um, pulling up her PowerPoint, point, I'm going to continue to talk. I'll, I'll let you know that at the facility, if you want to start your research, you want to gain as much information as you possibly can. I'm sure most of you, if you're working in that field, if you're looking at starting um, family history research, you're already aware of that. But here in the archives, we have many records that can assist you in that task. We do have census records, land records, wills, marriage records, and biographies. And I think you're ready at that time. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. Okay, so how to use Baldwin County records in research. So I'm gonna talk about um, just the different types of county records and how you can use those in your own research, whether it be genealogy, family history, um, academic research, really any type of re uh, research. So for example, we have a large newspaper collection, sorry, um, ranging from 1890 up until 2012. So a pretty large collection. Um, and we have those hardbound volumes, DVD and microfilm. But with the newspapers, you can you know, track events, obituaries, marriages, other publicly announced items. Um, we also have a lot of land records. Um, one of the land records we have are plat books and that tracks the ownership of land over several years. And um, it's often best paired with land books. Um, the land books, you can track the development and size and the ownership of a section of land over several years and is often paired with flat books as well. Um, and then we do have a large map collection as well. Um, and those can document the changes, documentation of changes or information related to a given area, including appearance, development, planning, and more. And then we also have other types of county records as well. I'll let Robert talk about that a little bit. And those records are official documentations, tracking uh, license cases, marriage license, divorce, criminal, and uh, jury roster, wheels, see what passed or what or who has passed, limits in numbers and sites, census data, see who lived, where, when, tracking, the locations, and cemetery records as well. See who was buried, when, where, and um, and useful their family genealogy. And let's see. Alrighty. And then I'm gonna go on a little bit about electronic records and digital preservation. So Sorry about that. Okay. So what is an electronic record? An electronic record is any record that is stored in a, stored in a digital format, such as a PDF, Word document, computer image, spreadsheets, video files, emails, metadata, 
And uh, what is the purpose of an electronic record? That could, um, it serves several purposes, including making it easier for the public to access records, allow for organizations to more easily track and store records and act as a backup in the event the physical records are lost. All right. Okay. And I will interject right here, guys, and let you know that we do have census records here in the archives that date back from 1805 to 2016. So those, those are documents that, that are very helpful in, in family search and genealogy research. All right, and so why is digital preservation important? So digital preservation, it ensures that the records kept by an archive are preserved even if the physical record itself is destroyed and it can be used on public access websites to allow patrons to access them from wherever they are. Digital preservation is also an ongoing process as technology advances and new formats are introduced. Um, one of the challenges that archives has to face is that we have to constantly adapt to technological changes. Um, and so basically the records must be updated to maintain their accessibility ensure that they are up to date and that in the event some oh, sorry in the event some version of them is lost and that additional copies remain um, patrons can also digitally preserve their own physical records by digitizing either scanning them or taking a picture with their camera um, however digital records are just as vulnerable to damage as ordinary records um, because either like a system crash could result in the loss of backup and the loss of records if they are not backed up properly or regularly. Um, a record's authenticity may be compromised if an alteration is made to it without proper authority or a record could be lost if the format is not kept up to date. So we constantly have to adapt to those changes in technology. All right. Um, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about what we're currently working on in the archives. Um, so right now we are trying to grow a more inclusive history that includes areas that are underrepresented, such as records that document the lives of Baldwin County Black communities. So right now we are currently uh, working on a collection of obituaries of African Americans. And right now we're just in the collection process. So we're, we're getting obituaries from like local churches, from um, funeral homes, or people can donate them. That's always welcome as well. Um, yes, it's also vitally important that we document um, COVID-19 um, because that's gonna be important, not only currently, but for future generations. That's a pretty much a challenge for us right now. It's not really something that people want to talk about, but that's one of the challenges that we're facing. I uh, also want to talk to you briefly about the security of preserving our permanent records here at the archives. Those um, records in the back, we do follow the security, climate control, um, the environmental protections, because all of that are, part, are, are important, and the supervision of those records. Uh, all of our e-records, electronic records, they are backed up um, by our server and for the um, other formats of records, we make sure those are backed up as well. Another thing that we're working on here um, is, of course, for Archives Month, we decided we, to highlight one of the collections here in the archives that will shed light on this point in history. And that is the removal of the Baldwin County seat. And that is something that we're going to showcase this Thursday at the actual courthouse here in Bay Manette. And most people know about that story. Actually, October 11th of this year will be the 120th anniversary of Baldwin County becoming the county seat and the courthouse being moved from Daphne to Bay Manette. That This is an activity or an event that we have hosted for the past, this will be the fifth year. So in observance of Archives Month, that is um, one of the activities that we will host. Also, we normally open up our facility to the public to come in and meet those who work every day to preserve their history and to learn more about our profession. 
We also encourage them to visit other archives and historic sites to learn more about their collections. Um, there's a lot of things going on. We have some hidden treasures back here in the archives. One of our oldest documents, 1732 wheel. We consider that a hidden, hidden treasure. And also when, in 1882, when the yellow fever broke out here in um, Baldwin County. So we are inviting the public to come in and find some hidden treasures or to learn more about the hidden treasures. And all of that information will be available to them on our website and our social media pages as well. So yeah, we have a lot going on. If you haven't heard, we are also new to our historic tours app. Um, it's, it's something that we've been focusing on for the past, I'm gonna say about a year or so now. And this app is marketed to visitors looking for a day trip to explore the county's rich history. Um, we want people to get a better understanding about the significant historic sites in our area. And the good thing about the Historic Tours app, especially during COVID, is that visitors can actually access any historic site virtually or go to the site. Um, it's also an educational component. It will also increase tourism um, for the county as well. So that's, that's kind of what we have going on. Like I said, we've, we've been here since 1999. This building was dedicated in 2005. We're a small facility, not as large as ADA ages um, and probably limestone. But at the end of the day, we have a lot of records here that could assist the public in their research. We're pretty busy um, with community engagement and outreach. Um, Selena and Robert, they're new to my staff and I'm, I'm throwing them uh, to the wolves today, uh, bringing them on, on set. But if you have any questions for us or need us for anything, we're here um, to help. Um, we're here to tell Baldwin County's story. Baldwin County has, history has many facets and historic preservation is just the way to help us tell these stories. Mm -hmm. So having the opportunity to do that is, is just is something special. And I think that's all we have. All right, thank you so much guys. And now we're going to uh, turn it over to Rebecca Davis from Limestone County. Um, so I'm gonna step back and hand it over to Rebecca. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little different. Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, okay. So, um, oh, and we've got some people walking in right now. So, um, this is the Limestone County Archives building. I wanted to show y'all because I think it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it was um, built in 1905. Oh, the front door is this way. Come follow me. So, it was built in 1905 as a train depot for the LNN radio station. So, when you come in, you'll be walking into what used to be the ladies' waiting room. We got patrons coming in right behind me. And this is our um, assistant archivist. Her name is April Davis. Hello. And she has been here since 2011. Um, she came here just about four months after I did. If y'all want to sign in right here, you can see when you come in, you'll sign in. I'm going to turn y'all around, try not to do too much uh, shuffling around, and just show y'all around what you'll see when you come in. So when you come in, you first sign in and then april will help you with uh, or i if uh, if uh, i'm up front will help you find the resources this is our reading room we've got some patrons in here working this afternoon and um, we have records on microfilm and these relate to our records in the back those are mostly county records these are all local newspapers you can see this is actually the original waiting room there's a picture of our building when it was in operation as a train depot. And uh, that's actually one of the original um, train depot benches right there. And so this was the gen original general waiting room, which meant white men, because this place was segregated whenever it was built. This takes you into uh, the original um, ticket office. And this is our library of resources. You can see we have things from other counties, but mostly what we have is Limestone County. And this um, here is, we've got family files in these three cabinets. This whole shelf right here, this whole selection, section of shelves is all Limestone County references and resources. And one of the first things that folks turn to is the master index, which is, um, it's printed out, but then we have the updated versions that are um, online that I'll show y'all here in a minute. Let's walk in here past the rest of the library to our exhibit space. This was the original depot agent's office. We have a permanent exhibit. Um, that is a oil portrait of one of our town founders and a um, 
That is an exhibit of the first courthouse back when there were six taverns and no churches on the square. We have a temporary exhibit up right now that was created by first graders, um, Limestone County Schools then and now. They went to our digital archives and studied on it and they uh, learned about Limestone County Schools back in the day and compared it to today. I'm very, very proud of what these first graders have done. We also, um, of course, pulled some things from our own collection to go along with that. And so we, we, you know, we change this out every so often. It's about time to put a new one up. We'll go on back here to the, um, this is my office and uh, there's my desk. And then there's, this is where the record storage starts. So we've got tax books right there. Our records go back to 1818, our county records do when Limestone County was established. Um, we have what most every archives has, which is backlog. <laughs> there's some of it that needs to be processed sitting on the table. I'll show you, that's the Bob Donovan collection. We're really excited about that one. And then we go on back. This is the original freight room. And this is where the rest of our record storage is. And so you can see we have more tax records and we have private collection, non-government records, um, voter registration, census, let's see, lots of chancery files. Those are great for um, genealogy purposes. And uh, we have, here's deeds and wills and marriages and mortgages. And um, we have, so all this side of the room is probate. There's our dehumidifier, gotta have that in Alabama. And uh, this whole room is for our fire suppression system back in here that uh, we had put in back in 2018. These are circuit, oh, sir, tripped over uh, um, a ladder, pardon me. So circuit court records, school census, oversized files, flat books, pretty much anything and everything. Limestone County history is what we do, who we are, what we're all about. And um, I'll set y'all down if y'all aren't dizzy yet. And, uh, and so I can show you how, to, the, how that coordinates, how that reflects on our online connections collections as well. So, but first of all, just a little bit about the Limestone County Archives. So the Limestone County Archives was established in 1980. It's one of the oldest county, one of if not the oldest county archives in the state of Alabama, which tells you that county archives in Alabama is still a relatively modern invention. And we um, were established originally, you know, for the express purpose of being able to preserve the Limestone County government records that had been just put into, um, you know, uh, improper storage and, and get those where people could access them and they were not going to be ruined by, you know, the elements. And um, it started in the basement, as uh, archives almost always do. And in 2004, the county and the city went together to purchase this 1905 LNN train depot that had been decommissioned. And in 2007, the archives, the county bought the, ha the city's half. And so the archives took over this whole building. And um, one of the things I didn't show you is because they're mostly in folders and um, boxes and so on are the thousands and thousands of historic photos that we have too because over the years um, we're actively collecting less and less government documents but we're still very actively collecting non-government records photos papers you know anything and everything related to limestone county history and the majority of our um uh, researchers are genealogy researchers that are especially looking through those probate records, trying and trying to find anything and everything they can about their ancestors. Although um, Baldwin County is now the fast is still the fastest growing county in Limestone County in in Limestone County in Alabama, but Limestone County is the second fastest growing now, and um, they so there's a lot of people who now who are coming to research their land and also just to come come learn about local history because they're new to the area and they want to get a sense of what, you know, what's, what's here and what was here. And so we also have a lot of resources that are available for purchase through our friends of the archives. Um, we, they have a Facebook page, of course, Limestone County Archives has a Facebook page. That's a great way to connect with us. But I want to share with you all our website because that's something that we really have worked on. Like I said, I have been here since um, 
to the end of 2010. So 11, almost 11 years now. So y'all should be able to see, let's see, let me switch over here. Okay, y'all should be able to see our Limestone County Digital Archives. Let me switch back to our homepage first. So you can, so I can just walk you through just like I did with the, um, with our physical building. So this is our digital presence. If you, if you actually just type in, it's easiest to remember, if you type in limestonearchives.com into your, oops, that went to mail, <laughs> limestonearchives.com, there we go. If you type that into your browser, you're, it's going to bring up this page under the county, and you'll, as you scroll down, you'll see pre archives, preserving and sharing the legacy of Limestone County. And there's several different components to this website, um, but we'll start where we almost always tell people to start with any of their um, searching is the master index, because that's the same as those black books that you saw in there. And nearly every name on every page of all the major books has been um, digital has been added to this master index and we're adding to it constantly and so this is our master finding aid we probably do it different than what a lot of archives do it was started by my predecessors and I've never seen another archives that does it quite like we do as you see even if you just do a search for Davis and it's what you see is what you get if you want to search for Davis family you need to search Davis comma because if you try to just search for Rebecca Davis or whatever and um, it won't bring up anything you'd have to be like Davis comma Rebecca so it's, it's a little clunky not so easy to use but it, it gets the job done so you can see even just by entering Davis you're gonna see pages upon pages of um, records now it where the record has been digitized as part of our online documents it'll be underlined and so you can click through to the like right there deeds and it brings up our online documents it'll take you directly to the page and there you'll see that deed from what year is that volume 10 um and it's you can zoom in on it so you can actually read it if you can read this cursive handwriting and um and then you can you know view download download it you can print it you can do what you need to do and so this is where our government records are we are kind of working to transfer those over to our digital archives that's powered by preservica starter but we'll that we'll, for now these are all still online now Let's say you want to just explore what we have, not just everything related to Davis or whatever name you're looking, but just all the books, the, the Limestone County government books that we have online. You can go back to, you can either um, click down here where it says browse our online documents. It'll take you to the exact same page, or if you're, let's say you're already in one, you can just go back to doc types takes you to the exact same page. And you can see all the different types of records that we have digitized um, and available online. This is by no means everything. And I can tell you right now, we never will digitize everything because there are certain things that it would just be cost and space prohibitive to do so. Um, and they don't provide enough information to really make it worthwhile for researchers. But now anything that's in our index, people can order a copy of. Most of those are just a dollar per document. And we can't accept payment um, online or on the phone, but we can um, accept, you know, once, once we get your payment, we can send the digital version of those records. But for example, let's say if you want to find out who all got arrested for what back in the day, if you click on the jail registers and just hit search, um, we'll just go open up. It's basically like going and grabbing a book off the shelf virtually and opening it up and flipping through the pages. And so you can just scroll down, you know, you can click down through all the pages to see, you know, what, who's, who was arrested for what, or you can find your great, great granddaddy and see if he got in trouble for, you know, moonshining and bootlegging like a whole lot of people's granddaddies did back in the day. And um, so that kind of shows you, you can see the different um, animal take up is kind of interesting. It's exactly what it sounds like. Somebody found somebody's cow wandering around down by the river and turned it in so that maybe it could be found. It does put a person in a certain place and time though. So it has some value. So for some people, that's the only record we have of their existence here in Limestone County. But you can see the type of records that we have. So this is part of, this is our online documents and the index, which are all under this tab right here. Now, if you want to get an idea of all the different types of documents that we have, you can click on documents. Let's say you want to see what all we have in deeds. 
Well, you get it. This list, all the different deed books. Um, it's if you click on one, it shows the shelf location. If there's microfilm and all of that, some of these shelf locations need to be updated because we have rearranged several times since all this was first in, uh, entered because of renovations and so on. And uh, in fact, we had a major, major renovation back in um, 2017 to 18. And that's when we added the fire suppression system and so on. But that's that's really more for mine and April's help to find a record um, on back in the back because uh, we, as you can see the way it's laid out, we've got people in the front, books in the back. So we have a couple of stopgap measures and this building only has about 20 different doors, but only one of them ever stays unlocked. And that's the front door. You know, we, we do take um, uh, the security of this building and of our documents very seriously as well, because this is our history. If it's, you know, this is the permanent record of Limestone County's history. And if it's gone, it's gone. And so, um, so that shows you how to use that document index if there's something specific you're looking for. Uh, I'll skip, I'll come back to our digital archives. In memory is an obituary database. I'll just click on browse and you can see, um, well, let's click on, for example, this infant Abernathy. You can see that it has, you know, it shows um, where they found this source and where they're buried and who their parents were, any information that we have from their obituaries or tombstone. And um, there's thousands upon thousands. The deceased archives is, People, any it, with people, if someone was born, died, or lived in Limestone County, and then uh, once they die, we enter them in there. So that's a great resource. And for example, if it's something that was in the newspaper, then you can then, um, you know, get a copy of that or whatever. So let's now go to my favorite. Um, part of this, which is the digital archives. And then I'll come back to our, our map here. So the digital archives, like I said, we, we actually um, had the opportunity to help beta test uh, this starter by Preservica, which is the program that we use. And um, so we, we were one of the first county government um, archives in the nation to be able to use this uh, software to be able to power our digital archives. And you can see it's um, the types of things we have here. Uh, these are the county records. Like I said, we're slowly starting to transfer things over from the um, old online records to the to what to this now and you can but you can see the types of records we have for example probate records you've got deeds and mortgages you've got marriages there are, there will be more that we will add to that and um so that's under county records now once you if you want to if you want to just get a little history light and learn about limestone county history um we have these historic marker videos that i have created they play right within the um sort of start one to show you but you can you know you can actually download these you can share them you can you know do it you can like them love them if you like them and um it sometimes it takes a minute to because it's server uh to to bring it up so i'm not going to wait on that to come up but if you want to learn a little bit more you can play any of these we'll be adding some more to these but these are just some little mini documentaries about some of the historic sites in limestone county and the story behind the story there then we also, in our archive, we have Limestone County History articles. Um, for several years, I wrote an article at least once a month for a local paper about um, just different aspects of Limestone County history, things of interest and so on. And so these are great little resources to use to learn about specific things from Limestone County history as well. Now, the one of the primary reasons that we have this um, that we Preservica is for digital preservation and um, not, you know, as opposed to just um, having things stored on a server, which is what we had this um, our digital preservation. I mean, this website actually provides backup servers and so on, kind of like what Felicia was talking about, to make sure that even if one copy of this particular record failed, then that would still be, the, the record would still be accessible. It's not going to be gone. And so a lot of these are not born digital um, records. These are digital surrogates of original records. For example, our postcard collection, which is often a favorite. These, this is one that I've actually completely done the metadata on. Being able to um, 
pop it up there on the website is one thing. Being able to get together all the information or the metadata that goes along with the record is another. And as you can see, there are only two of us. And so it doesn't, um, it just takes time. Uh, but for example, let's just, we'll just click on this postcard of Athens College 1942. You can, you know, play around with the postcard and we have the information all about, you know, everything there is to know about this particular record and who, you know, for example, this one was mailed with a one cent stamp from Lena to mother, Ms. Myrtle up in uh, Albany, Indiana. And so this, one of the things that we've done, and I'll go back home on this, is to help you navigate this, um, uh, our website is a welcome start here. And um, it, this shows you just a little bit, everything has been tagged with a subject, such as, you know, aerial and maps, African-Americans, recreation, wars, women, communities. So these are the major communities. I say major. Some of these are just wide spots in the road. But these are the communities of Limestone County. And so it will be tagged there. And then the time frames by decades. So let's say you just want to find everything that we have for Belmana. So if you just do a search for Belmana, it'll bring up um, this pictures of Jen, the gin worker, Homer Terry's garage, um, anything and everything related to Belmina, um, the historic markers, you know, the video, the articles, the videos, all of that relate that has any sort of connection to Belmina. One of the things that, uh, so that kind of shows you how to navigate that. So that's all under special collections. Special collections is where we have all these different collections of photos, documents, things that are not government records. One of the collections that we're really proud of, in fact, one of the things I meant to show you whenever I was in the library too, um, this is the Trinity collection. So Trinity was the African-American school that operated from 1865 to 1970 in Limestone County. And we have their photos and records. We have a, an agreement with the nonprofit that owns that, that now. And so there's lots and lots of photos. And this, this is some of the, this is the largest public collection of African-American history in Limestone County that, you know, that's accessible to the public. And so, because everyone, it was the only school for African-Americans in the county. So everyone had to go to Trinity if they were going to go to school. So everybody, every family connects back. And so you can see where we have all these different um, photos and things under this Trinity collection. One um, box that you saw on the table back behind me uh, was the Bob Donovan collection. So this is a, I'll show you what we have on our, uh, so far. This is Bob and that thumbnail. Uh, I'll go back. He was, uh, Bob always liked to take pictures of the pretty ladies, but he did not just take pictures of pretty ladies. He was a photojournalist for the Decatur Daily and took lots and lots of photos in the 1970s and 80s when he was really active. And he died in 95, but his brother donated his, his uh, photos, photo negatives to the Limestone County Archives in 2000, and nothing was ever done with them. And um, this year, we've had a volunteer come in to scan those. That's pretty much been his whole job, is 2,500 negatives. And everything from, I just uploaded a whole bunch of folders of the Fiddler's Convention, because that was just this past uh, weekend in Limestone County. It's our biggest event. And so I couldn't resist sharing some pictures from, you know, 50 years ago, whenever they had the Tennessee Valley Fiddlers Convention and one of the Tennessee Valley Old Time Fiddlers Convention. One of the great things about this is, you know, I posted up this picture and uh, one of our one of our county workers said, oh, that's my granddaddy. That's Sam McCracken. He was a, one of the fiddlers there. And so people are discovering that there were never before seen photos of their family and, and local events that we've been able to now bring to light thanks to finally digitizing this collection and digitally preserving it. Um, but it's not, you know, the fiddles is fun, but they, he also had a, a large series of um, civil rights and uh, KKK marches. And for example, when um, the, the 
landmark trial of Tommy Lee Hines in Decatur in 1978 and the counter protests between the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the KKK. And he took pictures of that. This one, I think, is just really powerful. That's why we've got it on the cover. But these two young, young people um, marching to free Tommy Hines and marching to Coleman to free Tommy Hines. And so um, those that's something we're going to continue to be adding to over the next, you know, so if you, well, indefinitely. Indefinitely, we are continuing to add to our collections and process those and make those available because that's really what it's all about for us is to um, is to be able to, to make Limestone County history available, accessible, searchable, preserved for now and for generations to come. And I, I think that's what everybody's trying to do as archivists is um, particularly, I think with government archivists, we kind of feel like we have this um, mandate to, um, to preserve the records of our democracy without which maybe we won't have a democracy. So if these are the records of the people for the people by the people, and that's what we're here for. And that's the primary focus, but anything we can do to help make that more understandable and accessible, that's what we're doing. And so the last thing I want to show you on our website is our map. So this is something we created a few years ago, um, monuments, memorials, and markers of Limestone County. And so this is a custom Google map and each point on the map shows you a different historic marker or monument. Uh, we even have a rocket <laughs> up here. Um, no, that's a Vietnam Memorial Memorial. There's a rocket up there too. But um, for example, down here in Mooresville, you get, there's a video for this one. So if you click on this, it tells you about the historic marker, what it says, where it's at, who put it up, all of that stuff. So that um, if you want to take a virtual or physical tour of Limestone County, you can, and you can go to all these different spots. And those, the videos are about getting a little bit behind the scenes, sharing more of what happened there besides what's on the marker and um, pictures that relate and so on. And, and truthfully, a lot of it, as Felicia said, is about this national reckoning of that the history was mostly recorded by the white majority and um for, of the white majority and then has been interpreted by the white majority of the white majority and there's another side to that story and so that's one of the things that we've really focused on i think we've done a decent job in the past few years of um trying to incorporate more african-american um records for example we now here i'll stop sharing so y'all can so we can just talk for another minute and um we now have you know thousands we have over a, we uh before when i started here we didn't have the first funeral home record for uh any african-americans and um the the funeral homes had not kept those and neither had we. And so um, we started reaching out to the churches and the little old ladies who keep their um, every funeral program for every funeral they've been to since 1953 in a shoebox in their um, in their closet. And we started scanning those and um, we have a series of books now where we've printed and we just keep adding to it as we go. So now we have over a thousand uh, African-American funeral programs and, you know, it is what it is. It's a start. It's not everything, but it's a start. And we realize that um, women also of any color are also uh, underrepresented in the record. And so that's kind of our next focus is um, what's the women's story? What stories, what, um, what records uh, preserve that, reflect that, and how can we, A, incorporate those into our archives and B, make those more searchable. One thing we've realized is uh, previous archivists, when they were creating the index, um, if there was a deed for a man and his wife, they only put the man in there. They didn't put his wife. And so we're going back and adding those in because those women had names too. So, oh, and you get to hear the train and it might be kind of loud. And with that, it sounds like a great time for me to sign off. <laughs> There's the train. You can't miss it. We are, this is still, it's not an active train depot, but it is definitely an active freight train track. So with that, I think that, um, I, I guess I could check to see if you all had any questions for me. No, but if, uh, as she said, if y'all have questions for me once this uh, is released, please comment, tag the Limestone County Archives, like us on Facebook, go check out our resources. We're just here to serve.
So with that, I'm good. All right, thank you so much, Rebecca. And thank you also to Felicia and Robert and Selena. Um, we just appreciate so much uh, you taking the time to share with us all of the amazing tips, strategies, resources. I, I for one can say that I am now excited to visit both of your archives, but probably not in the same day because that would be an awful lot of driving. Um, but make sure, you know, if you are in either the Baldwin County neck of the woods or up in Limestone County neck of the woods that you do get by and see these uh, great local archives and we will include links to their websites um, along with this video when we post it and also do remember uh, definitely drop in for the um, history now uh, that's going to happen on Tuesday October 5th at noon. Thank you so much everyone for joining us and we will see you next time on the next research rundown.